All right, this is Winning Cures Everything. We are doing the NFC and AFC Championship game recaps. Finally, it took us a little bit to get here, but uh, but we are here. We are ready to rock. Uh, the show, as always, brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. You can find more information on all six of their sports books over at tunicatravel.com. As always, you can follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash winning cures everything on Twitter at winning cures, the website winning cures everything.com. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube. You can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or any of your favorite podcast apps. Chris, let's jump into it. Uh, we'll start with the NFC, right? Yeah, we'll start with the first game. That's fine. Let's, uh, let's go on and start with that one. Uh, the Rams beat the Saints 26 23 in overtime. I, I hesitate now, – now that it's on Friday. We're recording on Friday about 1 o'clock. I have shifted from, you know, feeling awful for the Saints to feeling like you guys let this get away. You, it shouldn't have come down to one penalty. Yeah, um, the reaction Sunday after the game was over, and now we've had an entire week of listening to everything about this game – it, it is it is skewed a little bit about perspective, but even immediately after the game, I went and started looking at stats. The Rams beat them handily at every asset of the game. The only quarter that the Saints won was the first quarter. Yeah, that's it, and that's really where they lost this ball game is when they did not convert touchdowns. Correct, and that's where they lost the game is the one quarter that they dominated. Yeah, which is which is crazy. They they were up thirteen to nothing, and it should have been twenty one to nothing. Correct. And or and from at, the least, areas, at least seventeen nothing. At yeah, at least seventeen. Worst, worst case scenario, you got to come away with two of those. I would have went for it on fourth down, um, at least one of those times where it was. Oh, I agree. Close to the end zone. I'm I'm just I'm, after I'm there the second time, I'm not kicking a field goal. No, the the first time. So they get all the way down to the 19, right? That's right. That one, you kick the field goal and you just say, all right. But on, on the second one, it's fourth and four at the 10. Oh, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm in. Like, I'm, I, in. I'm going for that. I'm getting four yards, and, uh, and that's what we're doing. So, and then from there, I mean, the, they get the touchdown after that, but they give up a 14 play, 57 yard drive for a field goal, makes it 13 to three. And then they have three plays and punt. And then the Rams have to punt, but then it's six plays, nine yards, punt. Rams score a touchdown right before the half. That was the killer. It seven plays, eighty one yards in a minute twenty nine at the end of the first half to make this game thirteen to ten. It should have never been thirteen to ten. Not not close. And and here's what's sad about all of this. You just screamed a little bit. Um you caught the Rams where the most important player that I thought on their team that day was going to be Todd Gurley, where he was just god-awful. He got benched. He didn't get hurt. He was not injured. He was benched Let, in this game. Okay, hold on. Let's, let's talk about that. You, do you not think that he's injured? Like, there, I, there's something nope. wrong with him. No, nope, no. Nope. He played like shit. That's what's wrong with him. Yeah, but I, even the week before, he didn't, he didn't play all that much. No, but I'm telling you, he was perfectly fine. He came out and admitted I played bad. I, I'm, I, I just, just had a bad game. It's hard I to mean, play he, bad behind that offensive line. We talked about this on the uh, the live yeah, show on, being, on Sunday. Being injured like that wouldn't cause you to have the fumbling problems you have, have the ball slip through your hands the way you do. I mean, I guess it could hurt your focus a little bit if you're playing with pain. But, but no, he he looked bad. And he got benched for C.J. Anderson. That yeah. happened. Which is crazy to think about. It, one of your best players, MVP candidate, gets benched for a guy that's been on three different teams this season. Right. I mean, that's just crazy to me. If, if you tell me that that happens before the game starts, I think the Saints destroyed them. I think the Rams' only chance. It, it, and all this is on me in the sense of, of I was just wrong. I did not think Jared Goff could come into a situation like that and win a big-time game. I didn't think it was possible. I didn't think he was good enough or mature enough as a quarterback. In the first quarter, I looked exactly right. 
It looked like it was too big for him. He couldn't handle the crowd noise. He couldn't handle the stage. And it just made him look bad. The next three quarters, Jarrett Goff outplayed Drew Brees hands down. Every part of the game, Jarrett Goff was better. Yeah, Goff, 25 out of 40, 297 yards, one touchdown, one pick. You take the first quarter away from Goff, and Goff plays almost a perfect game. Unbelievable. And and the flip side of that, we talked about Gurley having a bad game. Sean Payton and Drew Brees had bad games. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the the play calling throughout the entire game for Sean Payton was – not figure it out. Yeah, it was it was a head scratcher, right? Like it, I had no idea what they were doing. It was no. awful. No, and I guess you don't want to be predictable, but at some point in time, it doesn't make any sense. The only person for the Saints that that can stand up and say I had a great game out of monster game is Alvin. Alvin okay. Kamara showed up and said, "This isn't too big for me," but he's the only one. Well, it, and that's only because of his receptions running the football. I mean, he was eight. But that's what he does, though. I mean, you can't say, well, he didn't do this well, but he did this well. Like, that's what he does. Right. It's like James White, you know, that's for right. the Patriots. It's That's that's what he does. Well, you, you say that. You say that. And third and seven, third and nine, instead of passing the ball, they run the ball with James White. He gets first downs all day long. Well, that, I mean, they don't always run it with him. They, 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 they did. They did. When we get to the Chiefs game, they did. They absolutely did. They ran it with him every time. Every time on third down, he did not catch a football on third down. Really? He only had six carries. Yep, and they were all on third downs, and they were like third and six. They were third and seven. I went back and rewatched the all 22 of both of these games. I have a much better understanding and feel for both of them after the games were over with, and I tried to break it up by quarters, and that's when I realized – watching the all 22 of this game one quarter at a time and just completely erasing the first quarter, then the second quarter and isolating them. That's when I was like, if you just break it down into quarters, this, the, the Rams dominate this football game. Yeah. They, they completely control the game after the first quarter. Yeah. The, the Saints should have, they should have come out and, and yeah. hit early and they only got up 13 to nothing. Yeah. And at that point they let the Rams hang around you let Jared Goff get a little bit of confidence at the end of the first half, and then it's over. So, like it, that's at some point, like we will adjust. Like the ref, even in all of that, they still got screwed. Yeah. It, and that happened. That happened. But Jimmy Johnson used to always say, "Don't let it be close enough for the refs to fuck you." I mean, that's just it. That that's what he says. That's what he preaches. That's what he coached. And and they didn't do that. If they no, score two with touchdowns you. out of the th- first three drives and, and and they play anywhere close to better football throughout the rest of the game offensively, that last play does not matter. Oh, yeah. I mean, the last so that, drive does not matter. What? How much time was left when that play happened? It was like a minute 42? Minute, yes, it was, it was less than two minutes, but it was over a minute and a half. So the, the field goal that they kicked – was it with one minute and forty one seconds? So I mean, one minute forty eight. The first for one yard line first down. So they could have killed clock because the cause the game's tied at that point in time. Yeah. So they could have they could have knelt it, made the Rams use every time. I think ninety nine percent of the time they win that game, they get that call. So I do think the call completely screwed them. It and just obviously there are the, and and that's why they're not going to go back and replay it and all that kind of mess because. You don't know. The Saints could feasibly still lose the game. They, they could, could still have to kick it a field goal. It would have been really hard for them to lose the game. I think they would, if they don't get a touchdown and only get the field goal at the end of it and they use all four downs to do it, I, I think I think realistically there would have only been 20-something seconds left and the Saints and the Rams can't stop the clock. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know that they're driving for a touchdown to do that or even for a field goal. Or, or we don't know that the field goal doesn't get blocked in return for a touch. Like, we, we don't know. Crazy right. stuff happens all the time. Right. So it's not a lock that they were going to win that game. But the odds were significantly increased if the pass, uh, the pass interference call had been made. Yes. Now, it had, obviously, everybody's got an opinion on this. Should the rules be changed? Should 
I mean, everything was was haywire afterwards about how the Saints just got completely screwed. So every, this is what I hate about the media and and the competition committee and all this stuff. Bill Belichick has been screaming this, and I know that's my guy, and I listen to him, and I think he's the smartest coach in the world. But but there's a reason he wins the way he wins all the time. He thinks logically through these things. His whole argument has always been: we only get two challenges a whole, the whole game. We only get two. So why is it in the last two minutes of each half we don't get challenges anymore? You take them away. So if I didn't use them, I can't use them now. That doesn't make any sense. I have to have a time. People are like, well, we don't want you challenging to stop the clock. Why? If I run out of timeouts, I can't challenge anyway. So you've already got that problem solved. So why is it within the two minutes I I have I can't just challenge it? And every challenge, every play should be reviewable upon a challenge. It, I get that you don't want to have the refs review every play and all this stuff, and it would take so much time. But if I only get two challenges, a whole whole half, it's our whole game. Sorry, and if I get it right, an extra third one, then then why can't I challenge everything, everything? I I don't understand that. Now today or Sunday, Monday, everybody's losing their mind. Everybody's saying, "Oh, we got to change it." This is not that complicated. You get two challenges. If you get them both right, we give you a third challenge. There's no time limit as to when you can challenge and when you can't. So you got to do away with the two minute bull crap because that's a dumb rule that makes no sense at all. Anyway, and then the other thing is, is there are no plays that can't be challenged. If you want to waste a challenge on you think a guy was holding. And, and you want to waste a, a, a whole call hoping that you get a holding call, be my guest. That you're putting it in their hands to see are they going to give it to you okay. or not. Was it close so you, enough or not? Yeah. But no, why the hell do you only get two? Yeah. And my other problem is, is if you get both of them right, you get one extra, I would be on the verge of saying, you know what? I'll give you unlimited challenges until you get one wrong. If you challenge it four times because the refs are that bad, and you got all four of them right, and you throw that flag a fifth time, we're going to let you keep challenging because as long as you have the timeouts available to, to, to allow this and and you're not wrong, we're the ones wrong being the officials, then why why is there a limit? If, if the officials are that bad and I've got to challenge it six times throughout a game and, and I get all six of them right, that means the officials got all six of them wrong. So why and should there be a limit on the coach? Why, why is there a limit anyway? So, and I'm totally good with everybody gets two, even if you get one wrong. I get that. But yeah. if you miss the first one, you get one more. That's it. You get the second one right, you get a third one. You get the third one right, and you still got a timeout to burn. You get a fourth one, and we'll just keep playing this because at some point in time, you're going to run out of time. Like the game's just going to end. Yeah. I mean, how many games does a challenge not even come up? I mean, every game. I, I would bet more games than not, a coach on either side didn't challenge. Now the the more realistic plan is the two challenges along with a third one, right? Because they they'll say, well, even if our stuff is bad, we can't have this go to review every time. At, if you do that, I think you have to have a guy like you can't keep this charade up of these guys like these refs on the field going over looking into a little box or looking at a video screen. Like leave it up to somebody in New York where the office is, and go from there. Like it just leave it in in each one of these calls, Mike Pereira, Dean Blandino, whoever it is, like get those guys that are good at their jobs to go in and knock it out from there. So so my like, other like, issue oh, my seconds. other issue is this we we have video evidence that there's an official standing right there watching the call, watching the play happen. Yeah, and doesn't throw a flag. And then there's another official that has come out that you watch runs up the sidelines, like yelling, pointing, saying, hey, 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 there's a flag here. And the official that was standing right next to it immediately runs up to him and waves him off. It's like, no, 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 you go back there. Like, what? what's that about? That guy's that was- obviously, he saw something and he was coming to talk to you about it and you shut him down, um, immediately shut him down. Now, you brought this up on the live show from Hollywood Casino on, on Sunday. You said uh, the Rams played this extremely well, and this was before the game. You before said, the game started. Like, they had petitioned to have uh, 
Bill Vinovich removed as the head referee because the Saints were like 0-5 straight up and against the spread with him being the head referee, and you thought it might could get into his head so that some of these iffy calls or these whatever calls would go the, uh, the Rams' way, right? That's right. Now, do you think maybe that this had anything to do with that? I, I do think – I do think that that gamesmanship worked. I think he he made the point of telling his crew, let's not make a call that makes the game go one way or the other. Let them work it out on the field. And if you don't have to blow the whistle, don't blow the whistle. And and I think the Rams maybe realized that early in the game, and yeah, then they did let they just said we're going to take advantage. We're going we're going to play it as rough and tough as we can until they blow a whistle. And they just didn't blow a whistle. So they kept playing it and playing it. But if you're beat, tackle the guy. And that's even what the defender said after the game. He was like, I knew I was beat. I was trying not to give the touchdown up. I didn't care about the pass interference. I was laying his ass out. Yeah. That simple. He admitted to it. So so we've talked about all that. I do want to ask this question. What, what are the Rams supposed to say? Like, I get that media people – want to harp and yell and scream, but it happened. And it's over, and we can't undo it, and, and the Saints have every right to be mad. Uh, um, I love that that uh, Tom Jackson and uh, Boomer were on NFL primetime after this game, and they were talking about how this is legacy changing, okay? Yeah. Legacy changing. Todd Gurley is now – the goat, as in the old way we used to think of goats before Tom Brady came along, of <laughs> you were the you were the reason that 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 your team lost. Okay, the old the old Cubs goat. All yeah. right, what do we think of McVeigh? The like entire NFL has restructured their coaching staff based on this guy, but every time he's gotten into a big game, he's lost. Like what? Like what do we think of him now? And how does that change his legacy? And also, if Breeze and Peyton go on and win a Super Bowl, man, that's that's two, that's two. That's two for both of them. If they go to yeah. hero status, to God's – I mean, this is legacy-changing call, and it's and it's all because of a penalty. Yeah, I mean, it's it, – I, of course, am the one that's, hey, all right, it's right, we're done with the whining now. Let's stop, right? And like, that's where I am. got to move on. Um, but on the other side, it is completely legacy changing. It if is. They go on to win a Super Bowl. This changes Jared Goff's life. This yeah. changes Sean McVay's life. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, this Rams franchise, and and of course, that's where the conspiracy theorists come in, right? That's like, right. well, we need the the Rams to do well in LA because they've got that new stadium opening up, correct? You know, et cetera, et cetera. And this will help that. Like, regardless whether they win or lose, like they made it to the Super Bowl, it's going to help sell tickets. And if they win it, it'll be even that bigger of a deal. I mean, oh, yeah. Well, so so I guess I start at this point and then I trailed off on something else. Um, but um, what, are the, what, what are the media people supposed to say, like, when they approach, you know, Sean McVay and he's like the guys for the Rams. Oh, you know you got a call there. You don't deserve to win this game. Like, what am I supposed to do? You want me to give the trophy back? You, you want me to walk over to the other locker room and be like, guys, look. We got a call, and you didn't get a call, and we beat you in overtime, and, and I'm sorry. So, y'all just go to the Super Bowl instead of us. Like, what the hell do you expect him to say? Yeah, Why nothing. are you asking I mean, questions that just, like, we're both of you ask an awkward question, and the guy just sits there like, okay. You, just, you let him go on, and, and if I were Sean McVay, I'd say, well, if they had called the face mask on Jared Goff, then, you know, we would have been up whatever the score was at that point. Like, it wouldn't have come down to an overtime. So, you know, I mean, there's all sorts of different stuff that you can't say because there were missed calls everywhere. Uh, I, some of those calls are ticky-tack. Oh, I mean, yeah. some of those calls are hard to see live. I get that. This was not. This is a call that people need to be fired. I oh, mean, yeah. a, a lot of people need to be fired. And then about that, we're a week into this thing. After this game, it's Friday. Roger Goodell has said nothing. He is he has crawled in a hole and said nothing. And that's what that's what pisses me off the most. And then I listened to Mike and Mike this morning because I don't sleep very well, so I wake up early. And and our Mike and Gold, our Wingo and Gold. and Wingo. Mike Golick on there, touting for touting for Goodell, shielding for Goodell, saying, 
Well, he's going to do like a state of the league address after the NFL, after the Super Bowl anyway. So in a couple of weeks, like it'll be a part of that. What is he supposed to say that would help his image or anything? And here's my thing. Nothing. Nothing's going to – what? No, there's nothing he can say that will help his image or make him sound better because this is a catastrophe. But yeah. you just because it's hard and it's going to make you look bad – doesn't mean you can just run away from it. Like, no, that's not that. okay. No, it's not. You're right. It, You're it absolutely... really ticks me off. It is, yeah, it's other world. Like, I, I, I don't even know what to say about it at this point other than, like, I'm done with the whining. Bad I, calls happen. I, and... I, 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 I was really upset when it happened, and I felt terrible for him. It, it is now Friday, the week before this, the Super Bowl is over. If the Rams go on to win the Super Bowl, will it be tainted? Yeah. Are there going to be asterisks everywhere? Sure. But I, at some point in time, you got to wake up, you got to go to work, and you got to worry about what you're going to do. Or if your season's over and you, you you got an off season, then go enjoy that off season. Yeah. No, I'm with you. And, but it, that's what I'm saying. It missed calls happen everywhere. I don't think there needs to be an asterisk. I don't think like these guys get there, For however that. they can get there. And whoever wins gets a trophy. And that's the way it goes. I, sometimes it goes against you. Sometimes it doesn't. And you just got to roll with it. Yeah. You know, like I, I don't think there's – over the years, how many bad calls in regular season games have cost teams chances at, at playoffs where they feel like they could have made a run, et cetera, et cetera. This is just the stakes were so high. Yeah, it, it was a prime think it, spot. What happens if this happens in the Super Bowl? in the last like minute and a half and now we're crowning a champion and literally as the confetti's falling everybody in the building has watched a replay that says the wrong team is on the podium i'm literally looking at it but because we have some weird archaic rules and and people are so afraid to use logic and reasoning to get it right that that we're just gonna we're gonna crown the wrong champion yeah now you're you're right you are right. Uh, let's let's go on and move into the AFC Championship game. Now you were uh, you were a happy son of a gun on Sunday night, I would imagine. I was pretty ecstatic. Uh, from it got a little quarter, hairy there at the end, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Fourth quarter got rough. Gave up thirty-one points in one quarter. Uh, well, it was hard. twenty-four in the in the fourth. That's it. Yeah, twenty-four. Yeah. Is hard. I mean, it, it was it was interesting because for the first half was the perfect game plan. And then Andy Reid deferred, just like the Chargers were deferred. Yeah. And I'm I'm going to tell you, I know that Bill loves to take to, to defer so he can score twice. Especially when you're at Arrowhead and that crowd is going crazy. Andy Reid should have taken the ball because that's his best chance to score. But yeah. when but when Tom and Bill drive down the field, drive it down your throat, and put it in the end zone with ease. That crowd goes silent. Well, not not just with ease, but over an eight minute drive. It was like what fifteen plays. That's right. Eight minutes. That's they right. didn't get the ball back until like New England held the ball for twelve minutes in the first half. They they went in the halftime fourteen nothing. Yeah, and they owned. It was uh, the the 20, time of possession was, I mean, was forty like four minutes to twenty one minutes. Well, that's what it finished at. But just the first half. I mean, it was. It was over 21 minutes of time of possession for the Patriots. They they just dominated every aspect of this game. Yeah. Every every level of the game they controlled. It really bothers me because there was such controversy in the first one. Everybody's flipping out about this one. Be like, oh well, this one's got an asterisk too. Like we had bad calls in this one. Really, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the face mask penalty. The roughing the passer, that was a pussy call that shouldn't have happened. I watched the All-22. I would like people to go back and watch the All-22. On three different plays on that drive, Julian Edelman goes across the middle. Three different plays on that drive, Julian Edelman is literally being drugged to the ground every pass. Yeah. Nobody calls it. And I think the back judge is watching that, but he's also looking down the middle of the field because he's behind the quarterback. And I think he sees it. And I think he sees a blow to the head 
from behind, doesn't know how bad it was, doesn't know anything, and he sees Julian being pulled to the ground, and I think he throws a flag on what he can throw a flag on, and that's it. Yeah. They didn't call a single holding or pass interference call against um, the Chiefs the entire game. And then the Patriots got two big pass interference calls on them that were pass interference, but they were pretty ticky-tack. There was some hand fighting, but by the letter of the rule, they were PIs. And my problem is, is that game was not called one way at all. The Chiefs didn't get called for anything. It was just whistle swallowed, and the Patriots could not play defense without getting a holding or pass interference call on them. And they shut Tyreek Hill down, had to play it straight up. They shut Travis. Well, shut, him, shut him down with an undrafted rookie. Like, that that's what was crazy to me. What, what was his name? Jonathan Jones? Yeah. I mean, well, just. And, and, and Gilmore played on him a lot, too. So, yeah, Gilmore played some, but but in big-time spots, they, they put the, the rookie on him. I didn't think there was any way they could shut both of those guys down. But Bill they did. Took, Bill took them both out. You uh you were right by the way the uh the Chiefs four penalties for twenty eight yards yep the, uh, the Patriots six penalties sixty one yards yep like that's no. that's how it goes the uh the domination you were talking about uh the Patriots had ninety four total plays to only forty seven so the Chiefs complete domination yeah five hundred twenty four yards to two ninety now the first downs is what what got me uh thirty six first down thirteen for nineteen. On third down. Yeah. 13 for 19. Four for nine for the Chiefs. But 36 first downs for the Patriots and 18 for the Chiefs. Only one of those was from a penalty for the uh, for the Patriots. Four right. of them were first downs for the Chiefs. So, of 18 first downs, they had four of them given to them. Uh, they had 14 first downs earned. Yep. Which I'm is telling you, crazy. this was – this was complete domination from start to finish, and because Patrick Mahomes is a wizard, he is an absolute stud that is going to wreck this league for a long time to come. He was able to put them on his back and carry them down, and I think the defense eventually just got gassed. Yeah, I, That's what I think happened. I think they just got gassed. They couldn't play four quarters and shut them down for good, but the fact that the most explosive offense in all the NFL, number one in every statistical category there was, went into that locker room at halftime. Goose egg. Which was what, the first time that had happened to Andy Reid in how long? Had it ever happened? I don't know. Unless, if it happened, it happened in a game where, like, McNabb got hurt or, or Alex Smith got hurt and, and somebody else, you know, was – I mean, we're, we're talking like a decade ago. Yeah. Like, uh, just crazy stuff. That's right. So, th this was – yeah, the Patriots deserved to win the game. Uh, Julian Edelman, seven receptions, 96 yards. Sony Michelle was an absolute beast. And I was sitting at the sports book at, with you before the game, and I went and looked at the prop sheet, and I saw Sony Michelle over under 81 and a half yards rushing. What I tell you? I'm, I'm like, I really should take this. He's right? gonna, I told you he was going to hit 100. Yeah, no, you were right. Like, there's no right. question in my mind before the game started, they're going to run the football. They played a perfect game except for the defense got gas at the end. And then the, the one mistake I think that they made that I think Bill, Bill was actually upset about almost cost them the game. Burkhead on first down scores a touchdown and leaves 39 seconds left. And I bet if Bill could have it back – now, I know they're down by four, so they got to get a touchdown – but I think he feels extremely confident that, man, I really wish you to lay down on the one. And let me let me just get 10 more seconds off, and then we run another play, and then we try to score then. And if we don't get that, then we hurry up and we run another play. But in four down, three more downs, I think he knows we could have got it, and it would have never seen overtime. Yeah. No, I, I think you're probably that's risky, right. That's ballsy, but, but, but Bill's not your conventional coach. Uh, I knew that we would not be able to predict how they were going to do anything defensively. There's no way in my mind I thought they were going to shut down both Kelsey and Hill. Hill. Just, yeah. just did not think it was possible. The Patriots don't have any talent from top to bottom. How far do we have to go 
if you're drafting all stars, all pros from the playoff teams before you take one of the Patriots. I mean, it it goes well. I mean, Dante Hightower, I think, is uh, past his prime, and there's there's ten defensive linebackers better than him on all these other teams. Is is he really past his prime though? I mean, he's he's only been in the league what five years? Uh, no, sir, no, sir. Dante, this is Dante Hightower's fourth Super Bowl, I think. Oh, this is um, no, this is like seven years, isn't it? Because yeah, no, he's played on Alabama for, twelve. Yes, yeah, he's been he's been in the league for a while. Yeah, for a while. Because he was middle linebacker at first, they moved him to outside so he could just rush the passer. I mean, let's let's look at it. Kyle Van Oy, uh, Devin McCourty, Elandon Roberts. Uh, I mean, I think Scott. Gilmore is the first guy drafted. If we're drafting just from these All Pros to build a, an All Pro team, just from these playoff teams, I think Stephon Gilmore is the first the first player for the Patriots taken. Well, let's look look at this. All right, so as far as total tackles go. Kyle Van Noy had 10. And then after that, you had three guys that had three each. You had, uh, I mean, but she like said five, so few six. Plays. You're not going to have a lot of guys make tackles. Yeah. Only ran 40 snaps. 47 plays. And, I mean, Dante Hightower had two tackles and one quarterback hit. Um, I mean, you got, what, three, four sacks here? I mean, Isn't that's. This was the perfect game, and because Patrick Mahomes is that great, that level exceptional, he carried them back to make this game close and to yeah. take it over time. That, that is what Patrick Mahomes is capable of doing, and, and the league better understand that. Uh, is- one, of the, one of the stats that came out, by the way, uh, Tom Brady got rid of the ball 2.32 seconds against the Chargers and got rid of it in 2.51 seconds on average against the Chiefs. Right. He has not been sacked. Both games. That is other world stuff. He's the only quarterback to make it through the playoffs this year that didn't get sacked. That's I don't even know that he got – let's see, he got one hit. He, he got knocked down once. I mean, that is – Once. That's some. That's crazy. He's, he's just playing in a, at a level that I didn't think you could play at his age. I watched the regular season, and I got worried that he lost a step. I fully believe that he's just trying to get into January healthy and does not care about the road games. I think he wants. I, to I didn't believe that at first. No, like, I didn't either. That I I immediately thought like, okay, so this is like LeBron in the NBA. This is like the Warriors in the NBA. Like, we don't care about the regular season. Just get us to the playoffs. Give me the January. That's what the team does. Give me the January. He wants to win all the home games. You yeah. only get only get eight of them, and he wants to win those, and that's it. He wants to win in Foxborough, and he wants to play in, healthy in January, and he just does not care. And and every year you've got the Jets, the Bills, and the Dolphins that's on right. the road, and you ought to be able to win that. Like they didn't win the but, Dolphins this year, but, but no, I, I think he's totally fine if he has to. If he went fifty fifty against those teams and won the home games and lost the road ones, I think he's okay. I don't think they're afraid of playing on wild card Sunday. I don't think he's afraid of playing on the road. If you told him you got to take 10 more hits, but you get by all the way throughout, or you don't take 10 big hits throughout the regular season, I'm talking a small number, but you got to play on wild card Sunday and on the road throughout. I think he'd say, I don't care. I don't care where I play. I just don't want to get hit. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're probably right at this I'm, point. I'm 41 years old. Next year, he's going to be 42. I just don't want to get hit. Every one of those hits could be the last one. So the last one. At that age, yeah. I mean, that's – we were we were this close to having a Breeze-Brady Super Bowl. I know. I know. That would have been something else to watch. And now, so, I mean, now we got Sean McVay and, and uh, uh, Bill Belichick. But listen, this is going to be good. I underestimated what I thought Jared Goff could do in a big game. Jared Goff kind of scares me in this game. I, I think that guy, he showed in in that seat, stadium, in that atmosphere, he was rattled for a quarter. And then after that quarter, he put his big boy britches on, and he went to work, and he was scary. He I, I think the ball I, with I really think that the Saints lost it. They, they lost it in the first quarter. No, I totally agree with that. But Goff, Goff had to play perfect to get them where they were to get them as close as they were just to take it to overtime, to go for those long drives that could make the, the, the game-time field goals or the touchdowns. And he made every big throw he had to. 
he 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 just controlled the offense far better than I thought he would. Um, I, I was impressed. C.J. Anderson does not scare me at all. I really hope whatever's wrong with Ty Gurley between his ears stays wrong because um, C.J. Anderson doesn't scare me. Being a Pats fan, I, and we'll get to that breakdown. I want to I want to get back to one thing I want about Mahomes. So Adam Schefter tweeted out after the game was over with, Patrick Mahomes could be, and there's a really good chance probably will be, the first $200 million NFL player. Good gracious. And if I'm – I was I was with my buddy Cameron, who's a monster Chargers fan, grew up in San Diego his whole life, um, just a true blue Chargers fan. I said, what do you think of that? And he smiled. And he said, if I got to deal with him, I hope he takes all of it. And I think he's dead on. I think he's exactly right. If he was smart, Tom Brady would have walked across that locker, locker room, which he did, go talk to him and say, listen, man, do you want to be great or do you want to be rich? Because there's insurance companies out here that will give you $100 million contracts. Yeah. Nike, you know, Under Armour. Under Armour's paying me $100 million. I can take pay cuts all day long. Go get you a, a Gatorade or, or a vitamin water contract. But if you take $200 million, you're not winning the championship. That, it's not, what you said with uh, uh, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. Took too much of the pie, Bubba. Yeah. The top six paid quarterbacks in the NFL, six out of 32, did not make the playoffs. Didn't even get invited to play for the championship. Yeah. that's And that has everything to do with there ain't enough money to go around. You, Bill Bell, look at the Patriots roster. Look at it. Outside of Tom, who is – so exceptional that you would mortgage the franchise for nobody. No, but they but they got depth across the board. They are above average at every position on the field, and everybody else is playing with stars and scrubs. And yeah. stars and scrubs just don't win in the playoffs. You can beat them one time, but you but you can't run a sixteen game season and then a four or five game playoff. You just can't do it. No, it's it's impossible to do. And you're right. You're 100 percent right. So, um, I I kind of don't want him to take that kind of money because I he is fun to watch. And he's exceptional. He's scary, but he's going to become Aaron Rodgers. He might be lucky if he gets one if he takes that kind of chance. If, yeah, if he and and honestly, their best chance is to next bring, year. Yeah, uh, either next year or in year four. Well, year four is when he'll have the deal. When I, he's, next year will be the last year. They'll give him the extension. Yeah, but the extension won't go into effect until year five. Okay. For some reason, I was looking at it, and I thought next year is their own their last time to get him on the cheap. No, this was this was only his second season. Well, I know that's so they've got season. next year and then year four, and then right. they've got the fifth year option. But the fifth year option can also be extended. Yeah. So they can go on and, and give him the contract. So they got a two they got a two year window, but even even when they go to pay those those guys to try to go all in those two years, they can only give out one-year contracts if they're going to pay him for the long haul. It's not like they can bring somebody else in and give them a five-year deal or a four-year deal. No, you're right. You're right. Um, I mean, and but the Rams showed that, you know, you can do that because – Oh, that's what they did. They're trying to pay Goff. They paid Gurley. Uh, but that's that's what they did. They brought in a bunch of hired guns for one or two years. They they locked up Aaron Donald, which that's was – Took smart him forever move. to do that. Took them forever, but they had to realize they had to do it. That's right. You know, they saw Khalil Mack, and they were like, "We can't let that happen to us." Yeah, we just can't. And so, I mean, the the faces of that franchise in LA are Donald Gurley and and Golf. Really, there was there was a day in the time, and that day in the time was, was more than a week ago, less than a week ago, not not too long ago, where I thought. When golf's time comes to get paid, I'd let him walk and I'd just go find another. Because McVeigh is a genius. And I think McVeigh knows how to analyze talent and can can find the right person to do what he needs to do. I'm I I just have not given Jared Goff enough credit this season. I just haven't. He's made some stuff look too easy, and and Patrick Mahomes makes stuff look complicated, look difficult, look flashy. And I think I've discredited golf far too much for that. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think you might be right. I think I, uh, that he's the first round draft pick overall for a reason. Oh yeah, I mean he's he's got all the talent in the world. Really, good. and with the right coach, obviously, 
it works out well. That's right. So you uh you still on this Nick Foles to uh to New England hype train? I don't know if it's a hype train. Um, I, I just I, I it wouldn't shock me if Tom hangs it up after this year. Yeah, if, if he wins another Super if, Bowl. If they win the Super Bowl, um, so this is this is my conspiracy theory in my mind. Uh, after uh, the Seahawks Super Bowl is when Giselle came out and was like he played all year with several concussions and she was not happy about it. He did the Tom Tom versus time thing on Facebook and um, made a lot of like signs of, you know, it's coming. I know it's coming. Giselle and I've talked. She wants me to hang it up right now. What I think reading between all of the lines and how much I follow Tom, I think he begged her to, to let him have one more. Well, I think, and yeah, he wanted one more Super Bowl. I think, I, want I, think he wants, I think I want one more. And if I get one more, then I'll walk away. And if he wins, so so why do I think Foles to the Patriots? I think this. The the Patriots and the Eagles, for the, ever since uh, Bill Belichick has been in New England, he has a relationship with the front office of the, of the Eagles. We're going on almost 20 years. It might have been 20 years. Every year during the draft, the Patriots and the Eagles make a trade. A couple of years, there hasn't been a trade that really worked for one of them. But just to keep up tradition, they will swap last round picks. What, all right, so so I have the the fifth pick in the last round, and you have the twelfth pick in the last round. We'll flop because it doesn't matter. Like there's no difference in the. I'm still going to get the guy I want, and you're going to get the guy you want. But just to keep up with tradition, so their front offices have a relationship, and and the only way that deal doesn't work is if. Is if Jer- if uh, Foles wants thirty million dollars, if he wants a Cousins deal, and thinks that he's worth a Cousins deal, the Patriots aren't going to sign and do. They're not going to make a trade and do that. But I, I don't think anybody's going to sign Foles for for thirty million. No, I don't even. Not worth. It. So that's why I think he signs the twenty year extension with the with the Eagles. Doesn't buy himself out of that, which he can buy out and become a free agent. Clean Wait, did you say the twenty year extension? Twenty million. Oh, 20 million, 20, okay, 20 million a year. He's got okay. a 20, 20 million dollar option that the, that the Eagles have picked up. He can buy out of it for two. And I think the Eagles are going to ask him, and they've got a good relationship, and they're going to ask him, don't buy out of it and let us see if we can work a deal. And we'll send you wherever you want to go. We'll make a, a deal that's friendly for you. But I think because of all the relationships involved, if Tom decided to hang it up, it wouldn't surprise me if Nick Foles is the next quarterback of the Patriots. I mean, that's just a – that's little – just, just – I, I, I'm taking pieces of – I know these two organizations have a relationship. I know this guy is not going to be there much longer. I know Bill watched him eat his defense to pieces in a Super Bowl and lose to him when they didn't punt. I, and I think they – the the Patriots also do not have – We don't have the heir apparent anymore. Or whoever. They don't have the heir apparent. That's right. So, I, I it, it just – like I said, if Tom wins and hangs it up, it wouldn't shock me if Nick Foles is starting for the Patriots next year, opening day. I think you might be right. All right, so that's uh, that's going to wrap up our recap of the NFC and AFC championship games. Chris and I will be back next week with our Super Bowl picks and previews and, and all that wonderful stuff, uh, and we'll dig into a few more things. We'll, we'll get back on track hopefully next week. Uh, for now, though, as always, hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Leave your comments below. If you're on the podcast, we appreciate you. Make sure you hit that subscribe button on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, whatever your favorite podcast app is. Head over to the website, winningcureseverything.com. The show, as always, brought to you by tunicatravel.com. Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. Six incredible sports books. Head down there, check it out. Uh, We got March Madness coming up, so perfect time to go in, get your college basketball picks in and whatnot, or go down and watch the Super Bowl. All these places have TVs. All of them have wonderful sports books. The beer is cheap. The food is good. Go check them out. Chris, you and I will talk again next week. Thank you, sir.